Imagine the sheer thrill of waking up one morning to the life-altering news that you've hit the jackpot. You've won the lottery, and suddenly all your financial worries melt away. As you bask in the glory of your newfound wealth, visions of a dream house, a luxury car, that long-awaited vacation, and providing a better future for your children start to form. Everything seems perfect in your world. But then, just a week later, there's an unexpected knock on your door. A mysterious man hands you a shiny gold envelope. As you cautiously open it, your heart drops. It's a lawsuit. Someone is attempting to take a portion, or worse, all of your hard-earned winnings. Did you ever think of such a scenario? Unfortunately, this nightmare became a reality for these five lottery winners who were thrust into legal battles shortly after their incredible stroke of luck. Join me on this gripping journey as we delve into the stories of these unsuspecting individuals, whose lives took a dramatic turn from jubilation to courtroom battles. Before we get started, I'd like to give a shout out to Elliot Nelson, you're doing great things for this channel, and we enjoy having you here. Now let's get to the video. Dave and Angie Dawes Meet former Royal Navy officer Michael Dawes, a man whose adventure and wealth takes more twists and turns than a roller coaster ride. Once upon a time, in a land where lottery dreams came true, Michael's parents, Dave and Angie, struck gold by winning a jaw-dropping 101 million pounds in the Euro Millions. Talk about hitting the jackpot! They were over the moon with their newfound riches, and like any good parents, they decided to share the wealth with their dear son and his civil partner, James Beadle. But little did Dave and Angie know that their generosity would lead to an unexpected legal nightmare. Michael, fueled by the idea of unlimited cash flow, decided to sue his own parents for more money. Yes, you heard that right. He felt they promised to be his personal piggy bank for life. Oh, the audacity. During the trial, it was revealed that Michael and James received a whopping £1.6 million over two years. That's enough to make Scrooge McDuck jealous. So, what did they do with the moolah? Well, £550,000 went into buying a swanky new home in Portsmouth. Oh, the perks of being a lottery-winning offspring. And James's family and friends got a taste of the fortune too, with a generous £250,000 gift. Talk about a family affair. But hold on tight folks, because the plot thickens. Our dear Michael decided to bid farewell to his IT expert job, believing his parents' money tap would flow endlessly. Spoiler alert, it didn't. When the cash well ran dry, Michael turned into a demanding dragon at his stepmother's birthday bash, roaring for a whopping 5 million pounds. And let's not forget, he showered both parents with verbal abuse too. Likes. As the courtroom drama unfolded, it was revealed that Michael and James were living the high life, splurging £20,000 to £30,000 per month, including £1,000 a week on groceries. Did they have a private chef, or were they building a gold-plated grocery store in their backyard? But fear not, justice swooped in like a caped crusader to the rescue. The judge quickly dismissed the lawsuit, stating that Michael and James had been showered with enough cash to lead a life of luxury. He even said that expecting more money was as crazy as thinking a talking donkey would show up at your doorstep. Okay, maybe he didn't say that, but it was close. Americo Lopes I am opposed to participating in a lottery pool because there is so much that may go wrong when someone wins. Americo Lopes is an example of this. Mr. Lopes was a construction worker who had been pooling his money with his co-workers for years, and on a fateful day in November 2009, all of their lives changed, but just one for the better, Americo Lopes. Now our pal Americo did what any sly jackpot wannabe would do, he kept his large victory hidden from even his co-workers. Are you kidding me? Walking around the building site, probably resisting the impulse to break into a happy dance. Hey guys, don't mind me, I'm just gonna quit my job for some uh, foot surgery, he probably stated with a smile. But believe me, this cunning fox couldn't keep from bragging about his newfound money for long. A few months later, he revealed his secret to a friend who is also in the lotto pool. If you're going to pull out a fraud, at least keep it under wraps. When the rest of the co-workers found out about this little deception, they were furious. Imagine the courtroom scene, co-workers giving Amurico the stink eye while he tries to come up with the most absurd excuse. Oh no, your honor, I swear, I had a separate ticket that was the winner. His defense, though, was as fragile as a sandcastle during high tide. Guess what? The jurors saw right through his claim of two tickets. They gave him a wake-up call. Amurico had to split that money, and I bet his co-workers felt a sweet taste of victory. This story is a little different from the others on this list. We have to refer to this winner as Jane Doe since no one knows her real identity, and that is exactly how she wanted it. She would take a single sum payment of $264 million after taxes after winning $559.7 million in the Powerball game. She would be the one to launch a lawsuit requesting anonymity shortly after winning. The key concern was that by signing the back of her ticket, she forfeited her capacity to conceal her name from the public. 
The lottery administrators want to make the winners' names public for a variety of reasons, one of which is publicity. It's fantastic for business to have you on stage with that large check in your hands and lottery officials all surrounding you. It fosters trust and excitement, which boosts ticket sales. But we are also aware of the disadvantages of being the center of attention. She discovered she could have organized a trust to receive her money and had the trustee sign the back of the ticket after signing her name and won the lottery. That's when she decided to sue to prevent her name from being made public. She prevailed in her lawsuit, but lottery experts advise players to avoid not signing the back of their tickets since it would be difficult to show ownership if you were to become separated from your ticket. Abraham Shakespeare On November 15, 2006, Abraham would take a break from work and travel with his friend Michael Ford to a convenience store to get drinks and cigarettes. When Ford got out of the truck, he asked Abraham if he wanted something to drink. He responded no but gave Ford $2 of his final $5 and asked him to buy two lottery tickets. He would be the $30 million winner. Mr. Shakespeare would receive $17 million after taxes when he accepted the lump settlement. He would treat himself to a Nissan Altima, a Rolex watch, and a $1 million home. When Michael Ford learned that Abraham had won the lottery, he decided to sue Abraham, claiming that he took the winning ticket from his wallet and demanded $1 million. Throughout the lawsuit, Abraham denied any wrongdoing and maintained that Mr. Ford did purchase the tickets, but it was his money and Mr. Ford purchased the tickets for him. Shakespeare would show the jury bags filled with lost lottery tickets purchased over the years. It took the jury a little more than an hour to reach a non-guilty verdict. Later, a lady named Dee Dee Moore would murder Abraham Shakespeare for Edward his money. Castro. Edwin Castro won the most lucrative Powerball jackpot in history, $2.04 billion. A lawsuit was launched against him before the ink on his signature had even dried, claiming that the ticket was stolen. Jose Rivera claims to be the legal owner of the Powerball ticket. He alleges he purchased the ticket from Joe's service on November 7, 2023, but it was stolen the same day. Jose indicated in court filings that a man named Reggie stole his ticket, but he did not elaborate on the circumstances. However, Reggie was not the one who claimed the winnings. Instead, Edwin Castro was named the winner. Mr. Castro did not attend the news conference and refused media interviews. He chose to take the $997.6 million lump payout. Jose's lawsuit names both Castro and Reggie as separate defendants but does not specify how they are linked to the alleged crime. Comment below if you believe Jose Rivera has a case, or if you believe Edwin is the rightful winner of the largest Powerball drawing in history. That's it for this video, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please hit the like button, share, and leave a comment below telling us if you think lottery winners should be able to stay anonymous or should they have to reveal who they are. Next, check out one of these videos. Until next time, have a good day.